G'day, g'day. It's Nick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. Now, it's no secret that Australia is home to the most venomous snakes on the planet. And they don't come much more venomous than Slug here, the inland taipan. In fact, she is the most venomous snake on the planet. Now, Slug here actually came to us after she bit her last owner and he ended up in hospital for 11 days on kidney dialysis. And he's alive today because of proper first aid. He did everything right. And working with these guys, such venomous animals, the difference between life and death is really doing the right thing. So here today, we're gonna to talk about five things you shouldn't do if you're bitten by a venomous snake. So stick around. It's pretty dangerous. For more wicked wild this is Tully Now the first thing we don't want to do if we're bitten by any snake is catch or kill the snake. And when people hear me say this, they often think to themselves, oh, the yuppie snake cat, he just doesn't want me to kill the snake. And it's not entirely because of that. In fact, catching or killing the snake is not only not going to help you, it's going to make things a whole heap worse. You see, if you were bitten by this guy here, George, who happens to be a king brown snake, and you took him into hospital, most doctors couldn't identify him. Doctors aren't any more trained in reptile identification than the average member of the public. In fact, most doctors would refuse to even look at a snake, alive or dead, because they don't like them. On top of that, if they misidentify the snake, they're going to be liable if they treat you wrong. Because of this, even if I went to hospital, having been bitten by this guy here, knowing exactly what he is, and working with these guys for a living, the doctors generally aren't going to believe me they're going to perform a venom detection test to make sure that they're giving me the right antivenin. Not only is killing the snake not going to help you, it could actually make things worse. Because as I've said in our video on snake bite first aid, which if you haven't seen, you should probably check out, we talk about the fact that snake venom in Australia travels through our muscles. Now, moving your arms around, waving them with the shovel trying to hit something, is only gonna make everything happen a lot faster. It's gonna risk you getting bitten again, which is gonna make things a lot worse, or maybe even worse, risk your first aider getting bitten. And now there's two of you needing help. So first things first, we never ever kill the snake. Now the second thing we don't wanna do if we're bitten by a snake is to wash the bite site. Now it sounds kind of counterintuitive. If you are bitten, you'd think you'd wanna get rid of as much venom as you can. But if I was bitten by this girl here, the Eastern Brown Snake, the way they figure out in hospital what antivenin I need is by taking a swab of the bite site and on the skin there's little bits of residual venom that tell them what type of antivenin I need. And if I wash that off, I'm only making it more difficult for them to treat me. So number two, we don't wash the bite site. Now the third thing that we don't want to do is the old school western method of the cut and suck. Cutting the bite site and sucking the venom out. This isn't going to help you. It only takes the tiniest amount of venom to do the job and you're not going to get it all out. All you're doing is wasting time, potentially getting venom into little cuts in your mouth or your first aider's mouth, making things a whole lot worse. And like I said in number two, you're actually washing off the venom from the skin, making this venom detection test a lot more difficult for the doctors when you get to hospital. So number three, we don't wanna cut and suck the venom out. The fourth thing we don't wanna do is to employ another old school method, and that'd be the tourniquet tying a bandage or a belt really tight above the bite site to cut off blood supply and stop that venom moving. The reason we don't do this is it also stops your regular blood moving. And in Australia, we have a significant number of what we call dry bites, where no venom's injected, or people are bitten by non-venomous snakes and they don't know it's not venomous. Now, you don't want to be cutting off blood supply to your hand and actually turned out that it's not a venomous bite. On top of this, when medical professionals do use a tourniquet where somebody's at risk of bleeding out, proper protocol is actually to release the pressure every 15 minutes or so so that they don't cause more damage than they really need to do. And in the case of a snake bite, where this venom has started pooling up on the other side of this bandage, everything's gonna start moving really quickly and you might not get that tourniquet back on again. What we wanna do is use the compression bandage, which you might have seen in our other video. If you haven't, make sure you look it up, how to treat a snake bite. This is what's gonna be to saving your life. We don't wanna do the old school tourniquet. So that's number four. And finally, number five, the last thing we don't wanna do if you're bitten by a snake is move the patient at all. You want first aid, you want medical help to come to you if at all possible. 
Now, a lot of people say to me, look, I'm in a fairly remote place or I'm a long way from help. And once you ring medical help, they might tell you otherwise. In certain areas, ambulance might tell you if you've got somebody to drive you to start heading towards them and they can meet you halfway. But thanks to places like the Flying Doctor Service, there's very few places in Australia where help can't get to you. And with proper first aid, the period of time that you've got for medical help to get to you is a surprisingly long time. In fact, last year, somebody up in the Blue Mountains was bitten by one of these guys, the Eastern Brown Snake, and they won't chop it out until the next day due to bad weather conditions. They're alive today because of proper first aid and not making any of these five big mistakes. So if you are bitten by a snake, Remember, you don't want to kill the snake, you don't want to wash the bite site, cut and suck the venom out, don't want to apply a tourniquet, and you definitely don't want to move the patient. If you want to know what you should be doing, like I said, check out our other video, Snake Bite First Aid, where we run through from beginning to end how to treat a snake bite. So there we go, guys. There's five things that you can avoid doing which will significantly up your chances of surviving in the event of a snake bite. Now, as always, I hope you've enjoyed our video, and if you haven't already, please like our Facebook page or subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to help out and support our channel keep growing and make sure our videos keep coming out more and more regularly, check us out on Patreon, where you can have your name mentioned in our credits and contribute to our show getting better and better every single week. Other than that, guys, be careful around snakes, be nice to all our wildlife, have a good one and take care. Oh, oh, oh.